What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with a series on a brand new rendering engine for you. So D5 Render is a brand new rendering engine that's out right now that's available for download for free that allows you to incorporate real-time ray tracing into your rendered images. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first things first, you can download D5 Render from their website at d 5 Techs. Dot com. I will link to that in the notes down below. Note this is currently in beta, meaning that it's still in development, but you can download it and try it for free. And so the first thing I want to talk about is system requirements. Um, so this system is built on DirectX 12 and it's also some other technology. So what that means is that you're going to need a newer operating system, a newer Windows operating system, as well as a pretty stout graphics card in order for this to work. And when you download this and try this, it will do a hardware test on your computer to make sure that it works. So um, at the moment, this is kind of limited to these higher end PCs. So Second thing, it is available for free. Um, they have said that their plan is to release both a free version as, and also a commercial version. So we'll see how that turns out. I don't know um, what the differences are from a setting or uh, from a feature standpoint or anything like that. But there will be two versions. It sounds like. All right. So when you first open up D5 Render, um, you're going to notice that the first thing is there's a demo file in here. You're going to want to download that file because we're going to use that for this example. So we're going to use that to kind of follow along and kind of show you around the program. But um, you, when you first open this up on the left hand side, there's options for opening recent files as well as creating new files and opening projects. So in this situation, for example, um, we're going to want to go to open project and then you're going to go find that folder with that demo in it. We're going to double click on that to open that. And so when you look at this page, when we look at the home page, there are options on here for tutorials and official forums. Those are not live yet because we're still in beta and then if you click on this go to live this does open up a page but it is in a different language I can't read it um, I think if you're from China you might be able to read it but um, I can't really read anything that's on the page but there is some additional information there if you can read that but in this situation what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to open that project so we're just going to go to open project then we're going to double click on the d5 demo and that's going to take us into a loading screen and then that'll take us into the actual program itself where we can fly around and take a look at some of the different options. One thing you may notice in the background here is because I'm running this on my laptop, my lap this does have some fairly significant system requirements so my laptop definitely does spin up while we're doing that so you may hear that in the background when we're working with this program. Um, eventually when I get this running on my desktop you may not hear that in the background quite as much. But when we first open this up, let's take Take a look at what this does. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so that it fills my whole screen. And so when you first open this up, you're going to notice that you've got a workspace over here, which you can navigate around using your mouse. So either by clicking and holding the center mouse button or by clicking and holding the right mouse button. We'll talk more about navigation in a second. You've also got a file bar at the top and that's your typical file bar that you're going to see really in any program. So you're going to have your save options, you're going to have different edit things and other things like that. So there's some different window options, there's some help functions in here. And then below that you're going to have a row that's going to have some different tools that you can use inside of D5 Render. So for example, um, you can use this to hide your sidebar and get a full width view. You can also use this to add different artificial lights. So you can see how like I could add a point light or a spotlight in here. So there's a couple different lights you can add. You can also use the material picker to select different materials and edit them. And one thing to note about this is some tools inside of D5 Render are going to pop up a little window. So if I was to click right here, for example, with the material picker turned on, you can see how this pops up a little window where you can edit your different materials. And we'll talk more about how to do this in a future video, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that just so you can see where some of these options are. So and then on the right hand side of the page, there's some options. We're going to talk about these in a moment. These are how you're going to export your rendering files and they can also change how you can uh, preview this. Note that you've got a middle quality and a high quality and just know that when you change your preview quality options, I don't know that it's, oh, yep, no, it will let me do that. Um, 
when you change your quality options, the higher quality you select, the better your preview image is going to look, but it's also going to be more taxing on your computer. So pick something that's going to fit for the kind of computer that you have. I usually leave this on low quality and I think it looks just fine. Um, this render option will let us export our image. And so one thing that you're going to notice when you first get into the program is it set up a little different from a navigation standpoint. There's really two different kinds of navigation inside of D5 Render. So the first is the 3D or the bird view. And this basically lets you rotate your view around. So um, for example, I am currently holding my right mouse button down and that allows me to rotate my view. Or if I click and hold the middle mouse button, it's gonna do more of an orbit function kind of like things would orbit inside of SketchUp. And uh, you can also roll your mouse wheel up and down to zoom in and out. However, what you're gonna notice is in 3D view or in bird view, you can't use the keys on your keyboard in order to navigate. So in order to do that, you're gonna wanna switch over to walk view. And so what walk view is gonna do is that's gonna put you in more of a traditional view where you can use the W, A, S, and D keys to move forward, back, left, and right. And then the Q and E to move up and down. And then if you hold the right mouse button and drag, so if you click and drag, that's gonna look in the direction that you're dragging. And then it kind of does the same thing if you click and hold the middle mouse button. And then the zoom function is still active, but it's not nearly as strong. So depending on what kind of view you're in, you're gonna select different navigation options up there. But to enable the WASD, you're gonna wanna click on the little feet right here. So now let's take a look at the left hand side of the screen. The left hand side of the screen is going to have a toolbar that's going to allow us to adjust different things having to do with our environment settings as well as your color post processing, your view or your camera view, and then the scenes inside of your rendering. So for right now, let's take a look at this first option in here, which is your outdoor option. So what your outdoor option is going to do is that's going to allow you to adjust your environment settings. So for example, notice that if I click and drag the time setting, my shadows are going to adjust based on that. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn my exposure down just a bit. I'm going to turn my contrast up just a bit so you can see those shadows a little bit more. But you're going to notice when you click and drag this up and down that your shadows and lighting actually update in real time. So you can also adjust the strength of the sunlight by dragging this up or down. Notice that that's affecting how much you can see your shadows. Then you can also adjust things like your sun height and your irradiation angle. I think that's more of a left-right thing. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but those can both be used to find adjust your shadows. You can also adjust your color temperature of your light. So if you have like a sunset, you know, you're gonna have a more yellow, where if you have more of a daylight scene, you're gonna have more of a blue light in here, more of a white light. So then the other cool thing about D5 Render is it gives you the ability to use HDR images on the outside. So notice that in addition to having an artificial sun, we can also adjust the strength of the environment light outside. So if I look over this way and I adjust the skylight intensity, you can see how that HDRI file gets brighter or dimmer, and that's actually casting light into my scene. So you can use this to adjust the color of light that's being cast by that as well. And all of this is live updating, which is really great because you can actually see the effect this is having on your image. Um, you can also use different HDRI files on the outside. One cool thing about this is you can use those different HDRI files. You can also load in your own custom files, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. One thing to note with this being in beta is I did have this crash loading in a bigger HDRI file earlier, but with the smaller ones, it seemed to work fine. So I don't know if it was that particular file or what, but just note that there are some things that are still being ironed out in here with it being in beta, but still I am super excited about the ability to have these in here because they're really going to affect the kind of images that you can create. 
So the second option is your filter option. And what that does is that allows you to adjust things like your exposure and your contrast live inside of your rendering. So instead of having to take these things to uh, like Photoshop or something like that, you can just adjust them right in here. So your overall image color temperature, you can see how you can adjust that. There's just a lot of different things that you can adjust like your color saturation and other things inside of this image before you ever have to export anything to really fine tune things. So you've also got the ability to add some fog in here and stylization. You can set this to a clay render if you want to look at your image and what's being created here. Um, just from a lighting standpoint, you can toggle clay model on and off. So you can adjust all of these as well as your depth of field inside of your filter settings. Your view setting is going to let you adjust your camera view. So I can use this to adjust my lens height, my field of view, other camera settings like that really quickly. Note that there's also an option in here to go to a two point perspective, which can make a big difference depending on the kind of scene that you're creating. And then the last option, gives you the ability to save and manage your scenes. And so notice with this that there's already a scene in here that you can click on um, that has different lighting settings associated with it. But if you create another scene, like let's say we were to go back over here, create our own scene with our own settings. So we'll go ahead, turn our sunlight intensity up. We'll adjust this so we get some rays coming in here. I'm gonna turn my color temperature to more of a daytime. So let's say we had our other camera image that was in here like this, maybe with a slightly smaller field of view, something like this. But we could come in here once we've set that up, we can click the plus button to add a scene. And we can take that scene and we can rename it. So we can call this like Justin's rendering or something like that and you can create scenes and you can also update them. So like for example, if I wanted to change this a little bit, I could just make an adjustment, like whatever that might be. Then come in here, mouse over this and click on update scene and that'll update this scene with your changes. And then, and so you can see how this is gonna live transition between your different scenes when you click on them. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video, and we will get more in depth in all of this in future videos, but the last thing I wanna talk about here is how to export your rendering. So to export your rendering, all you need to do is just go up to the render button. You can see how this gives you three options, photo, panorama, and video. In this case, you wanna export a photo. We'll talk more about video in a future video um, or a future tutorial. But for this one, we're gonna click on photo and you're gonna see that this is gonna give you the ability to adjust some of your camera settings as well as the size of the image that you're going to create. And notice that it gives you kind of a little bar at the top and the bottom indicating like, for example, if we do the 2K or the 4K, this is going to be a wider image. And then we're gonna leave channel graph checked. That's gonna export some additional options. But then once we have this set up the way we want, we can just click on export. So when you click on export, you're gonna go find where you wanna export this to. We'll go ahead and call this Justin's render, or we're gonna click on save. And so when we do this, this is gonna go through and this is gonna actually calculate the light and do like a full on, um, complete rendering. So this is gonna take a little bit of time because this is applying a lot of stuff to this. Really, if you wanted quick images, you could probably just take a screenshot out of this because this looks really good in preview mode, but the lighting is gonna look even better when it finally um, when it finally renders this out. And then once this is done, this is gonna pop up a little button right here that allows you to open the folder and look at what that exported. So in this case, you're gonna see this exported a couple different scenes. It exported my render file, and then it also exported an ambient occlusion map a material map and a reflection map, which you can use to do post-processing in like Photoshop or something like that. But if we open this up, you can see how this is gonna give us our rendered image in here in the background. And for the amount of work that we put into this, I think this uh, exports a really great looking image. There's obviously a lot of different stuff you can do to make this better, but I think this is a great start for um, creating a rendered image inside of D5 Render. 
So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you like this program? Have you been able to try it yet? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.